Matthew Aiken and Richard Cartier were two passionate and experienced mountaineers who had always dreamed of conquering K2, the second highest peak in the world. They were known for their determination and relentless pursuit of adventure. They decided to climb K2 in July 2022. They were accompanied by one of the other alpinists, Dubey Fami. He was the one informing the world with tids and bits of their journey through social media. He kept the world connected to them throughout the ascend. K2, also known as Savage Mountain, is notorious for its unforgiving weather conditions, treacherous slopes, and deadly avalanches. Many have attempted to conquer it, but few have succeeded. Matthew and Richard, undeterred by the risks, embarked on their daring expedition. They were excited to start this journey of K2, which they dreamt of for a long time. Matthew and Richard were always drawn to the mountains. They were fearless and had an unyielding passion for adventure. K2 was the ultimate challenge for them. The three alpinists, Matthew from Australia, Richard, and Dubay from Canada, started their journey in their early days of July. The three of them were well equipped and very well experienced. They were both experienced mountaineers who had trained extensively for this expedition. They knew the risks involved, but they believed in their abilities to overcome any obstacle. They started off their journey from the base camp to the peak of the K2. As they began to ascend the mountain, things were going perfectly fine. The weather was in their favor, and no harsh winds were blowing, and there was no snowfall encountered. The three climbers, bit by bit, towards their destination. Since Matthew and Richard were experienced and knew how to tackle harsh situations, so any small problems that were coming their way didn't feel challenging, and they were moving successfully. Till now, everything looked perfectly fine, and it seemed that they would ascend the K2 soon if the conditions remained the same. But as it is said that mountains are the most beautiful and yet haunting creatures of the world, in a minute, you'll see the brightest side of it, and in the very next moment, you'll experience something unforgettable, obviously in a negative way. And the same thing happened with the three of the alpinists. When it all seemed fine, things started taking different turns. The weather condition deteriorated. The mountaineers encountered challenging conditions. The weather turned harsh, and an unexpected blizzard struck the mountain triggering a massive avalanche. Seeing this massive change in the weather, the climbers were afraid for once and were reconsidering their decision to climb ahead. But Aiken didn't want to move back from where they seemed so close to K2. It had been a dream to climb it successfully and descend it too. After a small discussion, the three of them decided to move ahead as the weather seemed to relax a bit. They decided to climb K2 as soon as possible and then descend on the same day. Now, this might seem as a mistake by a few of the senior alpinists, as the weather conditions were not good enough. So the only decision they should have taken was to call off the summit. But Aiken and Richard decided to climb K2. They kept moving and the weather conditions were getting a bit better. At this time, it was July 21st when Dubay, on his Facebook page, updated their whereabouts. He informed the world that it was very cold and it was difficult to breathe too. He said that they had been walking for 16 hours now, and it had been very tiring for two days. As Dubay updated the world, it seemed like they would soon begin their descent. They were at base camp 4, which was 7,600 meters. By looking at the update that he shared, everybody down there in the base camp was expecting to meet the three anytime soon. But Aiken said he won't quit now when he is so close to K2 and would summit the K2. Richard, on the other hand, decided to quit as it became very tiring for him to climb constantly for the last two days. He then, along with Dubay, started to descend the mountain. Aiken successfully ascended the K2 and reported his team back to the base camp. Everyone was happy with Aiken's successful ascent. They congratulated him and praised him for his utmost motivation to summit K2 anyways. This success would not have been appreciated if the weather was not good but it was fine till Aiken ascended the K2. He was then advised to start descending as the weather was exceptional. Aiken started his descent and was hoping to see his friend soon. Since Richard quit it earlier, he believed that he would have reached base camp one by now. But what he didn't know was that a tragic end was coming for both of them. The ascent and descent, which he believed to complete successfully, was about to turn into a nightmare. The weather started worsening minute by minute, and then they were engulfed by a very bad snowstorm. Trapped in the deadly onslaught of snow and ice, 
Matthew and Richard fought for their lives, desperately trying to dig themselves out. They were both on their way down to base camp, but were not together. After the storm, they both went missing. The team back at base camp tried to contact both of them, but the radio devices were not working. The team put the situation on the alert, and the rescue teams were getting ready to find Richard and Aiken alive. It was a race against time. The avalanche had engulfed their path, and they were buried under meters of snow. The entire mountaineering community was holding its breath, hoping for their survival. Despite the courageous rescue efforts by teams risking their own lives, Matthew and Richard could not be reached in time. The rescue teams were in constant touch with the base camp and were asked for only one thing, to get Richard and Aiken alive out of these mountains. But things didn't seem to go easy on them. Rescue teams were not able to find any of them. They were declared missing and presumed dead, leaving a void in the hearts of their loved ones in the mountaineering community. After searching for a long time, the rescuers spotted two lifeless bodies near the base camp one and two. The look of bodies was the same as Richard and Aiken's. By the look of it, it seemed like Richard was somewhere near the Japanese Camp 1, where he took his final breaths. Aiken was found buried under an avalanche near the advanced base camp. He remains buried there, and luckily, his location is well known to everyone. Mostly in these kinds of tragedies, it is almost impossible to locate the bodies, but it seemed like nature wanted the world to know Aiken's last resting place. It was July 22nd when these two mountaineers left the world in a shocking state. After the location was found, the family members of Aiken's family requested the Mountaineering Society to bring Aiken back and bury him with all respect that he truly deserves. They were afraid to leave his body there in the snow as he knew that there was a possibility of a snow melt that would uncover the body sometime soon in the future. So a rescue operation was started after Aiken's family friends, and many strangers raised funds to $74,000. The money helped them to buy the necessary equipment needed to recover Aiken. It was also used to pay for the trekking permit, local trekking operator fees, flights, and purchase of gear. It was decided that the amount that would be left would be donated to charity. The rescue team, along with a few of the mountain climbers, who were Aiken's friends too, started their mission in February for three weeks. February is considered the safest month in terms of weather conditions. There are fewer chances of avalanches in winter. After locating Aiken's location with GPS, the rescue team was sure they wouldn't be able to move his body far away from where it was buried. The condition was not favorable enough to take him out of the snow, so it was decided that he would be buried at the base of the K2, where several other mountaineers were buried. Richard Cartier was too buried there. Bonnington Aiken's sister, said that it was a very remote area and it will take nearly a seven-day trek to reach there, so we can't go there and be part of the burial ceremony. Although it is heart-wrenching, she said that her family trusts the people there. They are Aiken's friends who have climbed with him earlier and would bury him with all the respect and dignity that he deserved. Aiken's family said that they were beyond grateful to the rescuer's team and to know that now their beloved Matthew Aiken will be buried respectfully is a feeling of relief. The excursion's team leader, an established alpinist who declined to disclose his name, recommended the group to grasp the opportunity to seek their friend. He said that if it was too dangerous, he shouldn't put people's lives in danger. But Matthew is just too nearby and approachable for us to avoid going and expressing both happiness and despair. In addition, he mentioned that in his 30 years of mountaineering, he had seen both the best and worst of human behavior. Having a respectful funeral for a deceased friend is a lovely act full of love, hope, and respect. They were feeling beyond grateful to luck for giving them this chance.